Oh, hello there. What am I drinking, you ask? Well, it's a whiskey. Shaken, not stirred. <laughs> Who shakes whiskey? <laughs> Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. Oh my lord. The other, the other thing about that bit, too, is uh, I drank a little too much whiskey than I intended to at first, so, like, the burn just caught me off guard. <laughs> but, anyways, my name is Spectre Bull, and they finally announced it. It's finally true after all this time. GoldenEye is coming to modern consoles, and I could not be any more happier. If that's grammatically correct, and if I can sound a little bit more happy, but I'm not exactly an actor now, am I? For this video, I kind of want to touch upon why GoldenEye is such a staple, and I don't want to get into some of the things that, you know, you can easily read up on Wikipedia. You know, the, uh, oh, it managed to, uh, show that it's possible for first-person shooters to operate on a home console and stuff like that. We all know that story. What I want to focus on is a little bit more specific as to why GoldenEye is super important even back then and today. And why you really need to play GoldenEye in 2022. After much anticipation between the leaked build of the cancelled Xbox 360 remaster in 2021 and the recent days of watching in desperation for a reveal as Rare developers pop achievements on Xbox Live left and right, GoldenEye 007 is finally, FINALLY coming to modern hardware. Hey, it's post-edit Ty, and uh, quick correction, Xbox did not reveal GoldenEye like I had thought it was going to be revealed, but let's be honest, this game is real. The achievements are up on Xbox's servers, so it's only a matter of time before it's revealed, so let's pretend like it did get revealed at the showcase, okay? Just humor me. Thank you. And old codgers like myself are drinking a martini, shaken not stirred, or in my case, a whiskey, in celebration of seeing the legendary N64 classic return. So Ty, why should I care? Why should I bother wasting my time on this old ass game from 1997 that hasn't aged well? I hear you Zoomers asking as you floss your way to the nearest GameStop and give the lovely employee your $70 for the 47th Call of Duty. But don't worry, I'm not here to spend 10 whole minutes lecturing you and make cheap jabs at you and be an old man yelling at a cloud. I'll be honest and say that I did not grow up when GoldenEye was around, and I didn't even play it until I was in high school and I played it through an emulator. So, eh, I'm not exactly in the same position as somebody who probably played it when the game originally launched. I came in at the tail end of what I would consider to be the golden age of gaming. You know, the days of the N64, the PlayStation 1, and the Sega Dreamcast. Well, sort of. Mostly the Saturn, but even then, meh. Despite my age, I love GoldenEye though. I love it with a burning passion, to the point where I managed to get both the 2010 remake and the DS version of that remake. Neither of which was great, but I had the best that I could get. Not only did the game serve as a means to help me focus through multitasking and kill time when teachers were making us do assignments that weren't even being graded against us, hush hush, don't tell my parents, it opened me up to first person shooters in general. Doom 64 was really the only shooter I ever wanted to play, and Goldeneye was a bit different. It was a tad slower, more methodical, while still having some semblance of arcade-like gameplay. But over the years, as first-person shooters have become more inflated with budgets, graphics, simplicity, and online support, I feel GoldenEye has only become more important, especially today. I've been replaying the original game as of late, both on original hardware and emulation, and I've noticed more reasons why GoldenEye has managed to stand the test of time way better than most first-person shooter games. Most will tell you it's the broken multiplayer. Others will say it's because it's one of the few good games based on a movie. While both statements are true, I have to say it's neither of those things. It's the level design. Prior to beginning a level, you are given a set of objectives to fulfill before you reach the end of the mission. The number of objectives will be determined by which difficulty you're playing on, 
Agent being the most basic tasks possible, and 00 Agent and the hidden 007 mode being the most complicated. Whether you have to shut down a satellite dish or disable alarms before breaching the facility, GoldenEye requires you to explore the level and keep an eye out for anything that looks important. Of course, if you've seen the movie, that'll help you in keeping up with the plot in some way. For the most part though, you're left on your own to navigate down corridors, allowed to play as stealthy or as noisy as you want. It all depends on how easy you want to make it on yourself. The reason I put so much emphasis on this is because you would think game companies would have noticed this back in 1997, or at the very least, in the years that followed. Unfortunately, they went the exact opposite, and since then, most shooters have gone the route of holding the player's hand. How many times across campaigns are we constantly being told where to go through waypoints and objective markers? And while that is nice for those who want to shut their brain off for the evening and watch things go boom, it ultimately distracts the player from the rest of your game. You've placed attention onto a number that tells the player if they're getting hot or cold, rather than let the player figure it out for themselves. It's no longer a scavenger hunt, it's a Looney Tunes styled billboard for something that's already visually obvious. Keep in mind, I'm not just railing on Call of Duty for this, I've seen Battlefield do this, various RPGs like the Yakuza games, many open world games, and even Doom itself, my favorite shooter series of all time. Doom did this twice, in both the 2016 game and Eternal. Now, I'm sure by this point someone is bound to say something like how Goldeneye and the aforementioned games are completely different in every way, with completely different focuses and different mechanics and blah 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 blah. Sure, they are different in visuals, themes, controls, content, etc., but it doesn't take much to notice how Goldeneye leans more into exploration. While the levels are just as linear as an average level in Call of Duty or Battlefield, Goldeneye puts in just enough branching paths to hide its secrets and plant its additional objectives or even weapons and armor. One path leads to the exit, yes, but to progress, you need to fulfill all objectives before finishing the mission, so maybe deviate and search that other corridor. Explore, familiarize yourself, roam free. This isn't about taking down all of the enemies or surviving waves while waiting on a computer to deactivate a missile or whatever. There are things to do, people and items to find, and different approaches to go about it. I'm not saying the aforementioned games don't do any of that, not at all, but when they're coded in objective markers and numbers, they aren't doing their levels justice, let alone their games. Then there's the mission structure in general. As I mentioned earlier, Goldeneye gives you multiple objectives depending on what difficulty you're playing on. Agent will give you the bare minimum. You know, just reach the end of the level, that's all it is. Secret Agent ups the ante a bit and gives you one, maybe two, or three more extra objectives. Double O Agent cranks it up a notch and makes the enemies tougher and gives you even more objectives. The enemies are more resilient, they're more accurate, mobile, etc. 007 mode is just a sandbox version of 00 Agent mode, but you can make it even harder under that difficulty on your own accord. Modern shooters rarely have any fun with their levels and ultimately tie difficulty down exclusively to enemies. Just put in more enemies, make them deal more damage, increase their accuracy and mobility, and that's it. Call it a day, wrap it up. Nothing else is much more different in the mission, nothing to throw a wrench in and further challenge the player, nothing to make it any more replayable. In my opinion, that sort of structure only makes the game more stale. Now, I'm not saying those games need to be completely different under every single possible setting. I do not expect that at all. However, isn't the point of difficulty supposed to be throwing one more ball into the player's juggling act? Instead of increasing the ball count, why not throw different types in? Tell the player, okay, you can clearly handle 20 at once, now try it with a bowling ball mixed in. Now try it while riding on a unicycle. Now try it with a chainsaw. Now try it with a chainsaw on fire. You need more ways to make the game interesting than just making the enemies beefier, and that's something I think Goldeneye handles very, very well. Playing Goldeneye today in 2022, it didn't just help me realize what's wrong with modern shooters and notice how kindergarten the genre has become, and, you know, again, be an old man yelling at a cloud. It also gave me a greater appreciation for what modern shooters have accomplished today. 
For as much crap as I've given Call of Duty, Battlefield, and the like just in this video, I do have respect for those titles as they have helped give other studios an example in fantastic gunplay and controls. Yes, all of us in the media dunk on these two for being the same as the previous games, but in the end, these two attract crowds because of their presentation and controls. GoldenEye admittedly does not hold up in this regard. In case you haven't played, GoldenEye has an ADS, an aim down sights feature, where the reticle always recenters itself when you stop moving it. It basically forces you to be touchy with the analog stick and attempt to hold it in just the right spot in order to land your shots. It's super unfriendly and cumbersome to pull off. And so, you're kind of forced to just shoot from the hip and let auto-aim do the work for you in combat. I'll take COD's gunplay over GoldenEye's on any given day, but let's just make sure we don't get another travesty like the 2010 remake. Yeah. Too much Call of Duty influence there. Look, GoldenEye is by no means a perfect game. I don't believe there is such thing as a perfect game. And if there is, it's a unicorn in my eyes. GoldenEye 007 though has earned the right to be called a truly amazing video game, one of the best, and be featured in various museums involving technology and the gaming medium. My point in this whole video is how GoldenEye does set a bar and shows how first person shooters can be engaging. There's a reason why folks look back fondly on this, and while yes, they do talk about multiplayer with their friends who cheat with odd job, they talk about the music, they talk about the presentation and the atmosphere, they talk about, oh, you feel like James Bond, I'm but in my eyes, GoldenEye has kept these folks engaged and entertained because it simply demanded more from them. It's the reason why people like Dark Souls and Elden Ring, it's because these games demand more. They still keep them fair, but they demand more from them. Whereas shooters today are just go from point A to point B, survive this wave of enemies, shoot at dudes until the computer manages to deactivate the missile, you know, whatever. GoldenEye delivered an experience where folks had to figure it out for themselves a bit more. There was more to it than just various shooting galleries, you know, areas that are set up intentionally for a combat encounter, or, you know, making a beeline for the exit as quick as possible while trying to stay alive. There was a demand for interaction, there was a demand for finding items and focusing on the mission. It gave more, it asked for more, and it satisfied more. That's the spark that modern shooters seem to have lost today, and it will always baffle me how more shooters haven't looked at GoldenEye for leads while their sales continue to slowly plummet. If you need any reason to go play GoldenEye here in 2022, it's for the level design, and after one playthrough you'll see why you might be tired of your modern shooter game. Having played GoldenEye for like a good chunk of this week, I've come to accept that as much as I love it, it's a very different game. And as much as I harp on Call of Duty and Battlefield for not doing what GoldenEye does well, especially in this video, I feel like I went really, really hard on them. And I'm trying not to, but I'm also, I, I expect more from video games at this point, you know? And I really wish that in this day and age we would kind of learn from each other, pick up things where others put them down, uh, you know, like share the wealth, share the knowledge and the ideas and try to improve upon each other, you know? And instead, we just get a lot of sort of half-assed stuff. I'm not saying that as a dig to Call of Duty or Battlefield or any of the other shooters you see today, it's just that when I see a game from years ago, decades ago, you know, it's 25, it's been 25 years since GoldenEye came out, just about, and I see how amazing that game turned out in its scope, in its format, the whole nine yards, and then I see Call of Duty getting released this year and it's just the same old fodder, and it's like, you guys haven't picked up any cues on that? Anyways. Let me know what you think about GoldenEye down in the comments, and please let me know if you do plan on getting the brand new game. And in the meantime, here's to you, James Bond. I know that it's not exactly a martini, but it's the best liquor I have in my place. Bottom up. Look.